one from last year or is this it? is one he did for this year's show and I just picked it up from the frame shop. God. That's my, these are my favorite ones that he does. But they're so realistic. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Standing around the back. This one will go. I think as soon as the doors open, this one will be mm -hmm. probably sold. This year there were three, I think three choices. And this is one we chose. We've given money to everything from women's breast cancer <laughs> to the mayor's fund. You know, every month, every year it's a totally different organization. The color of the water here. I think he thinks those mostly because he would love to be in space sure. where he had room to move around. It would be nice to walk up a mountain instead of sitting up. Wouldn't it be nice if one day he could uh, get, the, get that chance again? <laughs> <laughs> of course, everybody likes to be lauded for their work. Uh, and that's what I hope to do, and I, I, I enjoy uh, uh, people seeing what I, what I consider to be beauty. And I'm trying to show people that I, I saw this uh, orchid, and, 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 and it, it brought me joy, and it calmed me down. And I'm trying to, to paint it and show people, here, this is what I saw. This is what made me feel good, and I hope this will make you feel good. What I see with nature is uh, how intricate and involved it can be, how pretty it can be by itself, that it's a challenge to try to, to put that down on paper or on canvas. It's a challenge to try to match that beauty. I'm, I'm not sure that we, we can. Uh, it, it, nature astounds me that, that it's, that it's there, that it, it proves to me that there's a God. It proves to me that we don't need uh, toys or games to have uh, plenty to rest the eyes, to calm the soul. That's what nature is. I'm Emma Wayne Henley, Jr. I'm, we're currently at a prison unit in Texas, Coalfield Unit. Our brother Jim was killed by this artist that's being depicted here and given a private show. These boys were tortured. They had burns, dismemberment, castrated, uh, sexually molested. These boys died in agony. This guy up here gets an art show. That's not right. My brother's Nicole Cole Brown. Um, so no, I don't think this is right. This is an abortion of justice and it shouldn't happen now or in the future. Gilmer Wayne Henley, rot.
when I was elected district attorney of Harris County, which includes Houston and the surrounding area, and it was August 1973, a long time ago, but I can remember it just like yesterday that I got this telephone call that everything's really broken loose, all these murders, bodies being found. One day, my niece called me and said, Uncle Sonny, did you see the paper? I said, no, what? The headline, Mark has been murdered. I said, what? The uh, modus operandi was uh, uh, fairly simple. Uh, this older, older person by the name of Dean Carl uh, would drive around uh, in a van. Emily was just a kid, 15 years old, and Brooks maybe a year older, and they would uh, find uh, Oh, a couple of guys, let's say, and talk them into going and having a party, tell them they'd have a good time. Brooks found some way to get Mark up to Carl's apartment. Then they'd go out to Pasadena, where Dean Carl had a house. They'd go in the house, drink some beer, have some fun. Then Dean Carl would say, well, uh, I, we've got this game, you know, let's, let's play handcuffs. And they'd start, you know, he'd put them on. Brooks or Henley, and then, well, let me put you in handcuffs and try it. And when he stepped in, inside the door, they threw a handcuff on his hand, cut up with him, said, we're going to handcuff you. And then they handcuffed him to a bed. Then they would actually have these handcuffs that were attached to the body board, and they would handcuff the person just sort of like he was up there being crucified. And then they told what they was going to do to him, and he started fighting them. And then he got a pipe, a steel pipe, and they hit him in the right side and busted all of his ribs. And of course, he was raped then. And it was a terrible torture for, for many of the victims in that they would stay there sometimes, uh, according to uh, the confessions, for maybe 24, maybe 48 hours. He was tormented and tortured. His fingers was cut off. Oh, God. It was terrible, the things they'd done to him. What attracted me to Elmer Wayne Henley uh, was the, the ghoulish horror of that entire story. I, I don't deny that, nor am I embarrassed or ashamed of that. When I heard about those crimes, it was the most ghastly thing I heard, I'd ever heard of, and I couldn't wait to get to know this guy. This book is uh, a collection of stuff I've received from Henley, uh, Time Magazine, Newsweek, anything that had uh, theories about the uh, murder uh, once it occurred and practically all of the oh look there's a picture of uh, you and me on our first <laughs> visit there uh, the first one we did together the main thing I wanted to show you would be pictures of some of early pieces that he did these go back to about uh, March or April of 93 and some of them are quite simple uh, but good and uh, here's yeah, he probably the earliest talent. one of the dunes and he paints that a lot um, got a copy of the first letter. It says I'm five foot seven, 140 pounds, reasonably well spoken and contained. I love this. It says I'm blasé just as well. Your letters are the best thing you could give me. They represent your interest and your time. You can tell me about your life, what the world is about, and ask me questions. You can help me pass time and more importantly, a friendship uh, could develop. Uh, I'll go on and mail this now and I want your response. Sincerely, Wayne. The brush with whatever deviant uh, celebrity uh, I think was was the big thrill for me I got more uh, excitement out of getting a letter in the mail from John Gacy or Charles Manson or Elmer Wayne Henley than I did out of uh, making uh, $50 on a, a commission on a, a $150 art sale I actually started painting because of uh, Rick Statton's I would paint them and send them to Rick, and he would find customers for them. I'm sure the initial appeal is the my past, his criminal history. I would like to think that once people see it, that the, the art itself is appealing. The pieces that um, I have in my collection are going to differ from the art that Henley uh, makes available at art shows and for people that write in to him. Uh, to commission art uh, in as much as they're related to his crimes and he was very reluctant to do those and 
Uh, I think he, even though he did them because we're close friends, I still don't think he was thrilled about having to do them. I have a, a portrait uh, he painted of Dean Coral, the mastermind of the sex ring. And then there's one that he did that uh, I had requested the outline of the state of Texas and within the state uh, of Texas. He, uh, painted in uh, 27 little skulls. Uh, it also has a bloody fingerprint smudged on it and things like that that he added to it, but certainly this is not something that uh, he wishes to um, advertise or whatever. It's not things we put up at the show. He just realizes that I'm very ghoulish and very obsessed with the Dean Quarrel case. I have a, a watercolor painting uh, of the boat sheds uh, under which 17 of the victims were buried. If you know the significance of it, it's kind of creepy. like a different place than it absolutely it's been uh, not as uh, dreary and gentrified or and drab and depressing as it used to be it's still depressing but <laughs> it's not the same yeah, it's really right. they've yeah. taken some of the creepiness out of oh, it oh look it's still got the uh the original numerals and bob yeah. painted on them so that is one little piece of same. It appears that this used to all be shell too. The last time yeah, I was right up like, close to the stalls. Deep in the water the last time I was here. Right up close to the stalls, this still looks the same. Uh, and also the last time I was here, this was a whole lot more hollowed out. Yeah. Where you could see people had Absolutely. apparently tried to get up in there or or digging out for shell souvenirs or whatever. Yeah, these are the same numerals that have been here since. The crime, actually. You see them in all the uh, uh -huh. old footage and everything. Um, oh, we're going to get the video, video camera. camera. Yeah. God damn it. I left it in the car. I'll uh, be right back. Most unusual in that the defendant in the case, uh, Henley, was the person who actually called the police. And he was the one, the reason he called the police is that he had just shot Dean Carl. Carl, 40-year-old, roughly, I forget the age, but a much older man, and uh, I, I believe Henley must have gotten scared or saw the handwriting on the wall that he would have been a victim himself, and uh, the circumstances uh, were such that he just, he shot Carl and, and called the police. Who? Mama. Who is this? It's Wayne. Yes, this is Mama, baby. Mama? I still do. Wayne? Yeah. Oh, what are you doing? Yes, yes. Oh, God. Where are you? Um, it's all right. Wayne? It's all right. It's all right. Where are you? I'm, I'm out of this warehouse. Where? Out of that warehouse, you see. Can I come out there? Yes, yes. Oh. Is Clark? She can't, no, you can't come. I'm, I'm with the police, Mama. All right, are you going to turn yeah, that on? Good, uh, frame this up, make sure this is all set. All right. Well, here, here we are, back at the uh, Southwest Boat Storage. Uh, it's been three years since Rick and I have been here, but there have been a few changes going on. Uh, I guess there's a new owner and he's come along and gussied the place up. And as is our ritual, it is time, of course, to get a uh, rock uh, shell soil sample. sample. So here's the proof going into the bottle. These are actually the same as have always been here, at least uh, in my past uh, visits. What are you going to put them in a pill bottle? Yeah. Oh, cool. Good. Grab me a few hunks. Absolutely. This is a drawing of 15 boys, how they were buried in a boat shed on, in the southwest part of Houston. The holes were about two to two and a half foot deep. Sometimes they'd put two bodies in a hole, sometimes three. And what they would do is sprinkle lime on their bodies and cover them up with plastic. And when it was discovered, 
uh, they went in there and they dug these boys up and these are the bodies that they found just like it is on this map here. My son was number nine down here. I think everybody's always going to be searching for something new to, to, to do or to, to enjoy. And, and murder, to me, seem, never seems to lose its fascination. <laughs>